dynamic running back prospect Bijan Robinson was in Philly yesterday. And according to the most recent Vegas odds, the Eagles taking him could be a realistic possibility. Plus, Mel Kuyper released his most recent mock draft. Does he also agree with the Bijan sentiment? And the birds officially signed Justin Evans. Why there's a lot of upside. But first, let's run it. Josh Davis here and a happy Tuesday. Be sure to like and subscribe. You could win a Bijan Robinson Eagles jersey. More on that in a second. Did you see, speaking of Bijan Robinson, the news came out yesterday, and so you may have already seen, but his Instagram post, Bijan last night had posted this in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, and obviously you see the link there in the background. Then all of a sudden it started to, to blow up. People were like, wait, what in the world? Why is he here in Philadelphia? And then today we get the news uh, from Mike Garofolo of saying the reason why, and it says this post from Texas running back Bijan Robinson last night was indeed what it looked like. He's paying a pre-draft visit to the Eagles today, source says. Our guy moved the sticks, has said Robinson to Philly makes a ton of sense, though Howie Roseman has never gone RB round one. We know that. Howie does not really value running back. The question always becomes, is this a realistic possibility? And you could give a little bit more of an argument here. And you could build the case, if you look here, the, the graphic on your screen, but B. John Robinson is also signed to Nicole Lynn. So found this on Eagles Nation, and, and a lot of other people started pointing it out. But you got to remember correctly, Jalen Hurts has the same agent. Now, I know it's not always that the same agents obviously have the same players go to the exact same team, but it is a realistic possibility. And then if you go further with this argument... Take a look at the most recent Vegas odds on this. This was according to bookies.com, but you see right here, the Philadelphia Eagles first round pick odds at number 10. And look, look at the top player. It's Bijan Robinson, plus 400 odds. Yeah, you've got Devin Witherspoon there at 450, Lucas Van Ness, Nolan Smith, Miles Murphy, Christian Gonzalez, and then even the field. But I think it's telling here, if you're taking a look at this, the implied probability says 20% chance that the Eagles take Bijan Robinson at 10 compared to the field. I know there's these other players as well, but the top choice right now, according to Vegas, and you know, I think we all know that Vegas usually has very good sources and reasons for why they're taking bets or putting certain odds is plus 420% chance that B. John Robinson goes to the Eagles at number 10. What do you guys think? Is this a realistic possibility? Do you, do you side here with Vegas? Do you take that bet at plus 400? Is that something that you'd be willing to sign up for? Let me know in the comments below, but thumbs up even for how he potentially considering this because I think it shows that he's at least willing to, you know what? No stone is going to go unturned. We're going to see what we can get in the draft, obviously figure out if Bijan is a realistic possibility and see where we go from here. Now, my personal thoughts, I don't see this happening. It, it, it would be it would be very much unlike Howie, as Mike said in, in his tweet, and it's not really anything that we've seen before. Howie does not value the running back position. I think at 10 and 30, you could get defensive linemen, you could get offensive linemen. That's usually what Howie does. And so I would be shocked if he moved on and said, you know what? Nope, we're going to take Bijan Robbins here. As much as I would love it, and it would be an incredibly scary potential and a threat on the offensive side of the football, there are other holes that we need to fill. So that's my own thoughts, but still be curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. I mentioned winning a Bijan Robinson Eagles jersey. You may have caught it already at yesterday's show, but there's a promo, there's a giveaway that me and Thomas Mott are, are running. So tomorrow we've got the Wednesday link, the live show every, every Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern. But from now until the NFL draft, if you're subscribed to my channel, and to Thomas Mott's channel, and you join on any of the live shows, any Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern, from now till the NFL Draft, and you drop a super chat. Every dollar is one entry to, for a drawing to get the Eagles jersey of whoever they draft the very first pick in the draft, whether it's B. John Robinson, whether the, the Eagles trade back, it's someone else. Anyone that they draft, the first jersey there, we will ship that to you. So make sure to subscribe. Make sure to check that out. But we will have it again tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to tune in there. More breaking news here just came out right as we started to record this. But Jeremy Fowler of ESPN reports linebacker Nicholas Morrow has agreed to a deal with the Eagles per source. Morrow recorded 116 tackles, 11 for loss, in 17 starts with the Bears last year. Now, again, this is another player, as we keep mentioning here, similar story here. And if you, you kind of get the trend of what Howie's going for, guys with high upside, maybe some injury history and some issues there, but when healthy can play at a very high level. So 
thumbs up for this signing. I think this could be great potential. You're adding depth. You've got Nicobe Dean already, as well as some others that I think could potentially step up already on the depth chart. But I think Morrow here makes a lot of sense. He's played with Desai. He has the chemistry and the fit there as well. So I think this could be a phenomenal signing. But curious to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments below. And Mel Kuyper just released another mock draft. So the question then becomes, is it more of a realistic possibility? I know Todd McShay on his uh, most recent one he posted had B. John Robinson mocked to the Eagles. And that would be fascinating, but not sure what Mel Kuyper thought. He has the Eagles, as you see here on the screen, uh, drafting Peter Skoronsky. And so that's the tackle from Northwestern. The write-up here, he says, is, quote, center Jason Kelsey will be back, but the Eagles just lost right guard Isaac Sayamalu in free agency. Could they take the prospect some teams consider the best guard in the class? Skoronsky excelled at left tackle for the Wildcats, but his arms are slightly shorter than average for tackles, and so he could instead move inside. Philadelphia drafted interior lineman Cam Jurgens in round two last year, so he's the favorite to replace Sayamalu. But taking Skoronsky would ensure versatility and a competition. The Eagles haven't shied away in previous years from trying to stack strength on strength in the draft. I also thought about defensive line here. Uh, he goes on to say kind of Lucas Van Ness um, trying to replace, uh, obviously, Javon Hargrave leaving, um, pairing up with Jordan Davis. So we know that's a possibility. But that, to me, seems more realistic. And again, it goes with the, the motto or, or what Howie has been about for many, many years and winning in the trenches. So to me, that's a little bit more of a realistic possibility. Um, Skaronsky, I know, is maybe not the, the flashy pick or it, it's just the, the steady and stable pick, uh, but I could definitely see Howie going forward with this pick. But then moving on, so Mel goes, goes and talks about the 30th pick and what the, the Eagles would do there. Uh, Kalijah Kansi, number 30, Eagles picking Kalijah Kansi according to Mel Kuyper. And so he says, I still see Cansey as the ideal choice here, slotting in next to 2022 first rounder Jordan Davis for years to come and solidifying the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line. General Howie Roseman and the Eagles, who have two first rounders thanks to a deal with New Orleans last year, believe in investing heavily in the defensive line, so this is a pick to continue the trend. Cansey had an elite workout of the combine, though he's not going to be perfect for every team at six foot one, 281 pounds. He needs to go to a team that, that plays a 4-3 and allows him to penetrate past interior linemen and create chaos at the snap. Keep an eye on safety for this pick as C.J. Garner Johnson and Marcus Epps are both gone, end quote. That's interesting. He does say keep an eye on safety for this pick. I love this pick, though, and I've said it many times on many shows. I'm sure if you've been following, you know that, but Kalijah Kansi, to me, would be a steal at 30. I think if he's available there, you have to take him, and especially with the way that this team plays, as Mel mentions there in the article, pair him up with Jordan Davis. I would be fascinated to see how the two play together. I think there's a whole lot of upside with this pick. This is a very on-brand, on-trend pick for Howie, so that would be what I think, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Okay, other story of the day, the Eagles officially signed another safety. Now, you may have already seen Justin Evans. That was the uh, the news breaking last night, but the, the terms have been agreed upon. So the Eagles have just signed Justin Evans. So this came from PhiladelphiaEagles.com, but agreed to terms. And it says here, quote, there's a reason to think that Justin Evans has his best NFL football in front of him because what is in the past has been challenging to say the least. He missed an entire season 2019 on injured reserve after suffering a torn Achilles tendon. The next year, 2020 was a washout as Evans spent four months on physically unable to perform list rehabbing the injury. Evans then spent the entire 2021 campaign out of the football before returning to the league in 2022. Last year with the Saints, Evan played 15 games, four starts, recorded 29 tackles, two passes defended. Evans got his career back on track and now he is with the Eagles, having agreed to terms on a one-year contract on Tuesday. Evans has actually been in the NFL since 2017 when Tampa Bay selected him in the second round, 50th overall in the NFL draft, and he finished collegiate career at Texas A&M. Evans played 24 games with 21 starts in Tampa Bay and then the hurdles came at him fast and furious. The article goes on to mention that he's healthy now. The Eagles are very interested in this probably somewhat of a low risk, high reward type of signing. And it does fit the same brand like we've seen from Rashad Penny, a greedy Williams. This is a guy, as the article mentions, was drafted in the second round. So he has very high grades in terms of scouting and everybody thinking what he would be as a prospect in the NFL. And he did play fairly well with Tampa Bay, but then the injury bug hit him. And you could argue, yes, there's a lot of guys that have returned from injuries, but the Achilles tendon is a very concerning one. That, that's a very tough rehab. The guys have done it, but a lot of times you lose speed, you lose a step. And so I'll be interested to see how Justin Evans returns and how he's able to play. It is a good thing that he was able to at least perform in a couple games last season and get some action. So maybe he's not feeling the effects of that and that would be great. But I think this is fantastic. It's always great when you can get depth and when you can add that. It'll be interesting to see how he blends in the makeup and where Desai uses him and, and utilizes him in the past. Is this just a filling a void and trying to sign another? I know there's reports of the Eagles are going to get 
get another safety and add before draft day. Uh, and let's just pause for a second because I've gotten a lot of comments and questions and people saying, oh my gosh, this is the end. We lost C.D. Garner Johnson. And while I will say I think it was a bad thing to lose C.D. Garner Johnson, the more that this plays on, and CJ's making a fool of himself on Twitter, I, I'm, I'm just kind of done with all of his childish acts. So maybe it's a good thing. At the end of the day, your locker room culture, your vibes there, it, it could turn out to be a great thing. But let's pump the brakes on saying that this is terrible and there's no way that the Eagles are going to win the NFC. They're going to get back to the Super Bowl. That That's way too far to go. Because remember, C.J. Garner Johnson was signed very close to the start of the regular season. So we have a ton of time for Howie to execute other deals. I've still got faith in Howie. I'm not saying that he's lost his mind or he's lost a step or there's any concern there. So there's plenty of other time in free agency. Thumbs up for Howie. He's going to get some, some things done. We're going to hit on draft picks. It'll be exciting to see how he builds this team in the future going forward. Tomorrow, live show again. Reminder, with Thomas Mott, 7 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to tune in there. We're going to break down all the latest news, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who the Eagles are drafting, uh, other thoughts and rumors as well, uh, and even Jalen Hurts' contract. So what are the thoughts on that situation? But be sure to tune in as always. Make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Josh Davis, and this has been the Philly Special.